thank you for taking the time with us. Oh, no, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> anyway, I'm CJ Maffers from Toonami Faithful. Um, thank you for coming again to Anime Boston. I wanted to ask um, your thoughts about Toonami, uh, simply because it's been, you know, it was gone for a little bit, now it's back. It's been now on for five years with Adult Swim. Can you believe? Like, just think about where it's gone and now all of a sudden Adult Swim's like, you know what, we're bringing it back and it's been back. What What are your thoughts about that? Well, first of all, I have the utmost respect for Jason DeMarco because I know he's absolutely influent I mean like instrumental in Toonami being back on the air uh, and I follow him on Twitter and I, I had a lot of fun watching during the launch all the effort he put into that um, I love it uh, anytime we have the opportunity to get anime onto like a mainstream cable network or network TV uh, it does nothing but good things for the industry there's always like some kid in some small town that has never really seen you know proper anime and I don't mean I say that, I get in trouble for it. Not children's anime. Right. Like a proper show. Like mm -hmm. Something like Trinity Blood or Gangsta or something like that. And it leads them down the rabbit hole to like hardcore fandom. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And there have been some really great titles on the relaunch. Mm -hmm. Aside from like the classics, like Bebop and FMA, there have been a lot of other really... I was I was really shocked that Cat Shurn was on in that yeah. first season. That's like a... That's a call out to old school anime fandom as well because of the original capture, and so it was really neat. So now that it's celebrating its 20th anniversary, like, exactly, I was asking a few others, like, it's 20 years of Toonami, like, what does your mind think of when you when you think that there's been a block for anime for that long? That's pretty incredible. I have a hard time thinking I've been an anime, like, even been an anime fan that long, but I've been doing voiceover for like, almost 18 years. No way! Oh, wow. <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> I just think it's cool. I think when we first, in the original brand of, of Toonami, I thought it was cool that you didn't have to be sharing a slot with Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, so I've always loved the idea of anime being on at a prime time and, and like the whole package. Like, <clears throat> Toonami reminded me a lot of like, uh, there used to be this uh, channel called USA Network and they had this really rad program called Night Flight and it was for every like new wave and punk kid in the US. <laughs> And you wait for Night Flight to come on during the weekends. That's kind of what Toonami was for anime fans. Like, anime fans just love Toonami. And um, the funniest thing, when the relaunch was happening, I was watching kids, fans from all over the world, like, get Toonami back in it in Britain. Get Toonami. Yeah. It's like, wow, now I feel bad. There's a ton of Toonami channels yeah. now. There's some in Asia. There's uh, yeah. Europe and all that kind of... It's going everywhere now, yeah, it seems like. really, really cool. Uh, uh, but yeah, 20 years. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. It really it, it is. And speaking of the relaunch, a show that your voice was prominently on, Dead Man Wonderland. Oh, yeah, that was one of it's it's weird because not weird in just like the sense of people still remember it, but people are begging for either a reboot or more just to go with it. I know I personally do too because I wouldn't mind like other characters being in. What what are your thoughts yeah, of the popularity we still? Wrap the story up. <laughs> the manga con was pregnant. Uh, the story behind the manga taking the little hiatus that it did. She was pregnant and took time off to have a baby. Right. And apparently the popularity, the show started and the popularity of the manga had grown where they just started working on the show. Well, so they got to the end of 12 episodes and there was no more content. And so the show just wrapped with kind of a cliffhanger ending. Well, then she started working on the manga again and they're, they're really only like two or three, I think it's three more volumes after the little break. So it's not really enough <clears throat> for a whole season. But I'd love for like an OVA, mm. something like a two hour movie or something just for that story to wrap itself up because I was so frustrated at the end of that show. I, I take it you'd want to come back, yeah. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, I would love to see more. <clears throat> and I just love the story. It's, it's such a cool, you know, it's such a running man type story. Yeah. That it was really a lot of fun to be a part of. Do you have the manga? Like, or do you read it? You have it all. Nice. I have one of the Tokyo Pop. No way. Oh, wow. I grabbed one of the Tokyo Pop, and then when they started re-releasing it, I bought the new ones. But um, the Tokyo Pop manga were pretty hard to get your hands on after after the you know the collapse because uh, people were buying it up and saying, this is the only way you can de get Dead Man Wonderland. So I have one. I, I think maybe two, but I know I have the first volume from Tokyo Pop. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. 
Um, something that uh, my colleagues have said on the podcast is like they love hearing it when your voice all of a sudden is, is spec. I'm not kidding. I, I can't remember the episode, but it was during a sh- uh, Parasite where all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's like, oh, Greg Ayers is on this. So it seems like you seem to be pretty. Yeah, no, but it's for some like they keep saying like we love having you on, love having you as different characters, stuff like that. Why don't you bring yeah, yeah. I, uh, We can't complain about that. I just have a weird voice. <laughs> It also works against me because they apparently don't like putting my voice in the background. Like, the, like oh, we need eight people just to make some background noise. And they're like, the air is your voice. <laughs> so I guess I have just like a really weird voice that like uh, doesn't sound like other people's voices. But uh, I love it. I mean, <clears throat> as a kid, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Growing up in Texas, I have this weird voice. So uh, it's not something, you know. I'm proud of my artwork. I'm proud of my music, but I've never been super into my voice. Mm-hmm. So uh, over the years, uh, it's it's put it's put me at ease with my very strange voice because it's still weird to hear my voice and go, "That's a man in his 40s." <laughs> it's so bizarre, but uh, but I love it. I love uh, I've I've had people write to me and they're like, "I can spot your voice in anything." There's a girl uh, that used to work for Enemy Boston, and her dog recognized my voice <laughs> and would bark when he heard my voice and the first time they watched FMA, it was it was actually on a, a so I think it was before Tsunami, I think it was when they were just running it on Cartoon Network. Right. Uh, a scout started barking and Liz was like, Scout, that's not great. <laughs> Right. Because I hadn't announced it, it was a tiny roll, and then they sat down as the credits roll by it. Then she goes, "Oh my gosh, Scout, you got it right!" So her dog picked my voice out. So uh, I don't know, there must be something weird about my voice, but but no, I appreciate it. I love I love knowing that people can spot it. And stuff like that. So, yeah, and I love it. So, what a weird. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, did you enjoy being a, a actual parasite in this? Well, I mean, Brittany Karbowski and I have the only two weird roles in that show. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Everybody else is pretty, you know, slice of life, normal looking, and we're these two parasites. So uh, I loved it. I, lo- I love uh, little weird, wacky roles because you can kind of do anything with your voice and uh, not have to stress out about it. If, if you have, like, big character and you know you have like 52 episodes you can't do much because you know you have to do it for like 10 hours yeah a day. but uh if it's just a little bit you know comic relief part you can be as weird and as crazy with your voice too the dialogue for him was really funny yeah it was no it, it was quite enjoyable he's here this weekend mm-hmm. uh, helped retool some of that because some of the jokes were a little stale after after a while but it was fun. We, we managed to have a lot of fun with that show. So since you all work with Funimation and with uh, Sentai Film to do all this kind of stuff, can you at least say to expect more dubs from Sentai with your voice oh, in yeah. it? You don't have to say the show, yeah. Um, I, I just did, it's funny, uh, I don't think this is a broadcast type dub, but I always joke, I just finished this show called El Hauro X Machine Gun. Oh, yes, yes. Like, it's like Oran High School Post Club with guns. Because mm. it's about two airsoft teams. Uh, I was really excited about that. The show they have that I wish, 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 hope, fingers crossed, pray that they dub is Haikyuu. Oh, yeah. Love that show. And uh, it's got so many boys in it that I know I'll be in it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, they're working on a lot of great stuff. There's always... Um, the thing I've always liked about working for Sentai is they do niche titles. They do titles that um, I think hardcore anime fans would know about, but might fall through the cracks otherwise. And uh, I've gotten to do a lot of great key animation stuff with them, like Little Busters, mm. and, you know, Angel Beats, and Clint, the sad, the very sad Klonoth. Oh. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but I like the fact that I get to do, you know, those shows don't get the hype of, say, you know, Danganronpa or, you know, Attack on Titan or Gangsta or something like that, but they're great shows, so I'm really fortunate to get to work on both, you know, the big titles as well. Maybe maybe I could send this to a Sentai and be like, hey, you could redub it, you have it. There you go, yeah, hey. You know. Yeah, they have it, they just, there's never, they haven't done a dub of IQ yet. And I know that's... I they're, they're gonna do one. I would hope. It looks great, too. I haven't yeah, seen much. It looks really good, yeah. I'm not even a volleyball guy, but... <laughs> Like, it's one of those sports anime that they really figured out how to get you into what's going on. So, yeah, it's a great, great show. Have the broadcast dubs been tiring you out if you've been involved with a lot? I know Gangster was in there. Well, it's just, well, I I understand. I actually, I love it, obviously, as a fan and, like, getting 
it helps with that initial popularity of something where all of a sudden, instead of waiting like months from Japan after you've already seen it sub, you get it really quick of getting a turnaround with a dub. So I'm wondering, like, I'm sure you're happy with it, but I'm sure it is tiring. You're the first person to like make the connection that because they're done so fast, it requires a lot of hustle. Um, it's tough for me because I live in Houston and Funimation's in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So uh, in a show like uh, like Puzzle and Dragon, for instance, uh, or Puzzle and Dragons, uh, I play a fun little awful little villain guy, but there's some episodes where he may just come in and go, eh, what a loser, you know, like make one line and that's it. So like, uh, it's weird and they found ways to augment my time. Like uh, they do mark, there's some marketing things that we can do when I'm there to kind of fill up my day. So yeah. I never come up for like 45 minutes of work. And then have to drive all the way back. It's a five hour drive each way. So, um, <sighs> But that said, um, as an old school anime fan, it's fascinating to me that we, as like the American anime viewing public, are getting stuff so fast. Mm -hmm. like, I remember people making jokes about things like Koda Cha would never be dubbed because it had been years and years and years and nobody picked up the license. Eventually, Funimation got it. <clears throat> but now we're working on shows that people are still watching in Japan, which is fantastic. Funimation has really made a lot of headway in making that happen. There were there were actual laws that had to be reshaped in Japan wow. for simul dubs to happen because I think it used to be back in the day we couldn't start working on any re-release of something that was broadcast in Japan until eleven weeks after the last episode dropped. Oh, okay. And that was obviously a huge problem with piracy because you know, fan subbers would burn right on. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, um, oh, I forgot his name now. Oh, I feel so bad. Uh, the guy that used to be in charge of uh, the president of uh, Gonzo International, uh, Arthur. Oh, okay. Arthur Arthur said that like um, 12 hours after a show airs on TV in Japan, that there are 13 different language versions of fan subs that are already on. Jeez. And he, I loved it because it was like, even Finnish. Like, Finnish was. <laughs> <laughs> finished but uh, uh, so so obviously simul dubs have helped the industry overall because it's it's cut down on that level of piracy um, and then you you have more official subtitles that are like you know subbed and translated by better people um, people you know who make a living doing it mm -hmm. not, not dissing uh, fan subbers but you know people that actually make a living doing translation doing that I think subtitle fans are getting a better deal because they're getting a more official you know, more accurate uh, translation. I think dub fans are getting a better deal because we're seeing it you know, super fast. So um, it's a lot of work. And I'm, I'm sure I'm probably not, I'm sure not everyone feels this way, but I think it's worth it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think Funimation uh, definitely sees the value in it because it's something they have just wholeheartedly jumped into. And uh, I give them props for that. It's a lot, it's a huge commitment work-wise to be able to make that happen successfully and regularly and, you know, just keep it going. So, but yeah, thanks for putting the work together with that. First of all, like, I bet that's tiring. I'm like, it probably, it it, well, <laughs> it's amazing how fast people are like, oh, well, well, this will be dubbed so quick. It's like, this isn't like, instant, Space Dandy is a rare case, same yeah. with like Dimension W and all that. They, yeah. It doesn't quite work like that yeah. as quick as yeah, you'd want. Sure. Uh, and the dubbing process has gotten faster too. We've gotten better at, I'm like, that's one of the things, the longer we do something, the better we get at it, and the more we find ways to save time. So, so it's cool. It, it's, it's a process that is definitely being perfected for sure. Uh, one other uh, kind of off of Toonami yeah. you're uh, D in Danganronpa you're Monokuma yeah. have you played the games like did yeah. it did it seem weird that it, like all instead of like the video game cast it was now you guys doing it well and it's weird because uh, like we knew that we knew ahead of time that you know we were going to be stepping into somebody else's roles and I have good friends that were in the game right so it's like uh, we're the new group and uh, I think when they made the announcement we've actually made the cast announcement here at Boston I actually I do think I recalled that yeah they were two they did two there was one at Soccer Con and Chris Bevins and I were here and we did the one here um, we initially expected a lot more backlash than we got on it I think Danganronpa fans were just excited there was an official release because that <laughs> was one of those shows that started to feel like it wasn't gonna you know, come out. Uh, the fandom had started to, you know, simmer down a little bit, uh, and so I think uh, Danganronpa fans were just excited to get it. Um, 
And the only real flack we took was a little bit online when it first aired. You know, right. First started showing on Funimation.com. But all in all, uh, even some of the original cast, I met Erica Harlocker, who shares the role with Caitlin Glass, and we met literally on a panel at a convention that I go to every year called OMG Con in Kentucky. And the, I felt bad for the audience. The first four minutes of the panels, I was like, oh my gosh, I love your work in the game. Oh my gosh, I'm watching the show. And like, back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I feel lucky that we kind of got on a good foot with the actors. Right. That can go south. There are many stories of actors that have stepped into another actor's role that that's led to a lot of... Oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so uh, we're lucky. The cool thing that our director did, so we did Dog and Rampa 2 and 3 or 2.5. I know, it's weird. <laughs> what he tried to do is as many of the California actors that wanted to, he put them in other roles. Mm -hmm. in the show. So nice. Neat, so they're not playing their original roles, <clears throat> but it's kind of, t of a tip of the hat to the original game cast. They're hidden without, you know, the yeah. rest of the cast. So it's really neat. And uh, Bevins is kind of cool because he does stuff like that. He does a lot of things that most people don't get. Right. When you go back and look at it, you're like, that's Erica Harlocker. That's Kaiji Tang. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I think that's pretty much I, th I think we're all set. But no, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you.